What's up everybody? Welcome back for part two of the RB25 Terror Down. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and click right here or, or over here, wherever it is, and check out part one so you can catch up to where we are now. So right now it's just the main block. I'm gonna go ahead and tear down the whole thing. Stick around for that. So in part one, we went ahead and took off the whole exhaust side, the manifold, the turbo, the AC compressor, power steering, the engine mounts, and on the intake side, everything is also gone. Intake manifold, the oil filter housing, thermostat housing, everything is gone. So we're left with just the main block, which is the really important stuff. You know, everything is right here laid out on the tables. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the whole main block. And I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible, tearing this whole thing down. So let's get started on that. All right, so let's start off by taking this plastic cover and the valve covers. The plastic cover is just a bunch of allens that go around. It's eight of them. And for the valve cover, it's going to be these Phillips that go all the way around. And it's 10 on each side. So let's get started on that. With the cam covers already removed, the valve covers, we can see the cams inside here. And they're actually pretty clean if you ask me. Now go ahead and take off the coil pack. Should have probably done that earlier. But it's just a bunch of these bolts that hold onto the bracket. You can also disconnect them, but I'm going to pull the whole thing out as once. With that done, let's go ahead and start taking off these timing covers. And I'm also going to head and take off this little bracket out of the way. It just uh, holds the manifold in place, I think. Uh, that cross pipe that goes over, it just goes down here. So I'll go ahead and remove that out of the way and start taking off all these timing cover bolts and the cast, the crank position sensor or crank angle sensor. So I'll go ahead and pull that out. Be very careful with this. They are fragile, they are old, and they can break on the inside. So be careful with this. Just three nuts, three bolts that hold it down, and then the allens that go down around here. So top timing cover is off. We exposed the bell and all the cam gears. Now we're gonna do the lower one, but we gotta do the crank pulley first. And this is a big old 27 mil. And I recommend to use an impact wrench because it's pretty hard. If you try it with a regular uh, breaker bar, you're just going to spin it and it's not going to break loose. So I'll just go ahead and break it loose with an impact wrench. And that's going to be the easiest way. I've already got my loose. So I'll go ahead and take that off. And hopefully we don't struggle too much. Uh, and we hopefully don't need a crank pulley for this. Hopefully it comes loose just like that. So let's take out this big old. And make sure you keep that washer there. Don't lose it. Right, so you guys just saw actually how to use that jaw tool that uh, pulley puller uh, it just goes around and the bolt pushes in and it pulls it out you can rent those out for free anywhere at AutoZone or Riley's um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lower timing cover I got to get the woodruff key this little notch here that's the woodruff key and this is holding this little thing in place so go ahead and remove all that right now and then we'll tackle that water pump So with the lower timing cover removed, I'm actually pretty dumb and I didn't notice that this little washer has a little notch on it. You actually can take it off. So that little notch lines up with the woodruff key and it slides out. Now remember which direction it goes because it does have to go back in that same direction. So it's actually concaved on the inside. So the concave part, this side's flat, goes like that. So just remember to keep orientation of that and actually can't remove the water pump because the belts are in the way. So we'll actually go ahead and loosen the belt first. This is the tensioner, this is the idler pulley. We'll go ahead and loosen the tension and remove the belt and then tackle all these bolts that go around the water pump. And actually, if you guys remember, these are actually the same ones that hold on the alternator bracket. So these are already loose, but we'll go ahead and do the rest also. So I went ahead and broke these two loose. This is a 14, this is a 17. And on the tensioner pulley, if you see, there's a little space for an Allen there. So I went ahead and broke this loose. Now you get your Allen, stick it right in there. And if you guys can see, when I turn it, it actually turns 
the pulley itself, relieving the tension from the belt. So you're gonna go ahead and do that. And now the belt can slide off. So I'll go ahead and put the camera down and slide that off. Alright, with the water pump out of the way and the pulleys out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start doing the camshaft pulleys. Now this is the little bracket that holds on the cast and it's just three bolts that hold it onto this and then this one's got these little tiny ones little phillips that are holding this this is actually the variable cam timing for the rv25 if you guys didn't know they do have variable cam timing on these not all of them i don't think the neo has it but this one does this is a series two so there's a lot of things that are in here behind this and just want to make sure you keep everything in order so when you put it back it goes back exactly the same way so i'm gonna go ahead and break all that loose and start pulling these things out and then i'll also go ahead and remove this back uh plate that for the timing it's just the plate that separates the valve cover from this side so i'll go ahead and remove all that stuff right now So with all that out of the way, we now have two options. We can either remove the cams and then remove the head or remove the head with the cams still on it, which is what I'm going to do just to make things a little faster for me. And when it comes time to do the cams, then I'll go ahead and remove them. And with the RB, you can actually remove the head with the cams on there. If you guys see on the camshaft, these little notches here, that's actually so you can be able to fit a socket down there that's the allen in there and you can actually have enough space with these little grooves here so you can fit it on there take it off and you'll go ahead and remove it with the camshafts now to remove this usually when you torque them down it's from the inside out we're going to do it from the outside in to remove it and that's just to try to avoid any warping on the head since it is an aluminum head so we'll start off with a cross pattern you know we'll go here 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 like that you know your regular torquing if you guys need the torque specs uh just get the service manual it's online everything is online nowadays so we'll go ahead and remove it in a star pattern i guess but from the outside in and we'll go ahead and pull the whole head off all right so all the head bolts are now removed but before we pull this off there's actually three little 10 mils one or eight mils i think they're tens one we got two and then three this one's actually the one that holds that uh coolant bracket for the turbo so this one's already loose so we got one two and three go ahead and take these off if not your head is not going to come off so i'll go ahead and remove that and then we're ready to pull out the whole head with the cam still on there just like i said here are all the head bolts now i will be using studs so i highly recommend you get new ones if you're going to keep the bolts but just go ahead and do studs they're not that expensive and it's pretty much a must do for a high power car so i'll go ahead and start uh doing all that now head is now removed it's chilling right here like i said i left the cams on it so we just removed the whole head together now we gotta flip around the block and remove the oil pan so we can get to all these pistons so far everything looks good gasket looks good nothing's broken but we'll go ahead and remove everything anyway so flip this around and get to that oil pan oil pan is now off now we're going to go ahead and remove the pickup tube this is the oil pickup tube here so it's just these two bolts and then we'll go ahead and tackle all the pistons and you can see this is the connecting rod right here and this is these two nuts that hold the pistons together now i put the screw back on the camshaft on the crankshaft i'm sorry so i can be able to spin it so i can get to the pistons so i'll go ahead and bring it up just like that go ahead and remove it and then i'll go ahead and bring it back down just to help the piston come down and then i'll go ahead and knock it a little bit just so it can come out through the bottom of the block so i'll go ahead and remove all these pistons each one is held on by two on the connecting rod so we're removing the connecting rod with the piston obviously 
Now go ahead and remove the pickup tube first, and then we'll tackle the crankshaft. All pistons are now removed. As you guys saw, I accidentally dropped that last one, but that's the way I did it. I just went ahead and unscrewed these nuts on top and then took my rubber mallet with the handle and I just tapped it, I actually tapped the little stud right here to slowly come off. And then this one was a little stuck. So with a flat head, I actually went ahead and tapped right here. Just so you don't damage anything, I tapped the stud right there. Everything's getting replaced anyway. And I actually found some damage on piston number one. And it seems like I just have bad luck with cylinder number one. This piston actually has some cracks in it. Let me find them. Right there, you guys can see that. Look at the ring lens, they're cracked, just like on the KA. So it's a good thing we're taking this engine apart. So it's a known thing for these Nissans to have weak uh, ring lens on the pistons. Uh, so it's a common issue, but we're going forged pistons, so that's a good thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually take off the oil pump, which is this front piece here, and all these bolts that go around it, and this whole piece is gonna come off. We can't take the crankshaft off until you take off the oil pump and also the rear main seal and this little plate that holds that. It's also a bunch of little bolts that go all around. So I'll have to try to put a socket in here and get this back piece off and then this whole front piece off and then we can take off the cradle and the crankshaft. So crankshaft and the cradle are now off. Also don't forget to take out the bearings that go in here. Now the way that I took off the cradle was the same thing with the head. Instead of uh, you know torquing from inside out, we went uh, from inside out. We go from outside in. So I started here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And I break them loose just a little bit each one. And then I'll give it like a quarter turn on each one. So I try to do them all as evenly as possible. You're probably not gonna get any warpage, but just in case. So everything else is off, just one more thing to take off and that is the oil jets or the oil squirters. I've already gone ahead and taken them all off. This is the last one right here. And it's just a little 10 mil. Right there, this is what uh, squirts oil into the rods and the crankshaft, obviously by the name oil jets, oil squirters. So we'll go ahead and just take that off. This is already loose. There you go, just like that. And now, the whole block has been torn down nothing else on it well except the dipstick but that one you kind of got to punch out you guys can see right here get a socket that's around that size and just you know carefully punch it out or try to pull it out because it's in there uh, it's pretty much pressed in there so it, it's kind of hard to take off so I'll just go ahead and punch that but everything else is off the head, we'll go ahead and do on a separate video so I can get more in detail with the lifters and the valves and all that stuff. But everything else is now removed. Now I have everything in order right here. So I have cylinder one through six. This is the front of the uh, block. This is the back. And I have everything laid out. The back of the block facing the wall and everything that goes in front facing this way. So I know exactly where everything goes. I have the sandwich bags labeled out right here. So I know where every nut and bolt goes. Now our block is ready for the machine shop. I'm just gonna start tomorrow. So there you guys have it. You have now successfully disassembled your RB25 DET. Now the head, we'll go ahead and do that on a separate video because I wanna get more in detail with the valves and stuff. Uh, but the block is completely ready for the shop. We'll go ahead and send that out, get it cleaned out. And we'll get ready for that rebuild. With that being said, one last step, or well, two steps. Clean up your tools because you don't want greasy tools the next time you start working on this thing. And now have yourself a nice cold drink. It's hot out. I don't drink alcohol, so I'll drink a Coke for you guys. Ah, uh, there we go. 
now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my tools, relax a little. If you guys wanna see the RB25 get built, forged internals, my goal is at least 500 horsepower, which is definitely doable. And actually, I, I really, realistically, I want six, but I'll be happy with five, 550. If you guys wanna see me get to that power goal, make sure you subscribe, share this video, any questions, Go ahead and leave a comment down below. I always look at your guys' comments and I try to answer your questions as best as possible. I'm gonna go take a rest. Well, I'm gonna clean my tools and then take a break. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.